this, this morning I just want to take a brief time to speak on a topic called the structure of a dream. How many dreamers do we have in the house this morning? We have dreamers, amen? Have, have good dreamers. And uh, we have to understand one thing from, from, from being a dreamer is that our dreams, they never have an expiration date. Whenever you start and God gives you a dream, maybe you are a young person, maybe you're still a kid, maybe you are a, a, an adult, maybe you're going through high school, maybe you're married, maybe you're an elderly person. Whenever God gives you a dream, that dream does not have an expiration date. It's not like if by the end of 2016 I don't accomplish my dreams, my dreams expire. It doesn't work like that. When God gives you a dream, He's behind you to fulfill that dream when he gives you a dream that in the last days God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh it's not by but this time that if it doesn't happen you know just dreams are vanished or dreams doesn't come to pass when God calls you to you know to reach a generation or to be able to start a home group or to be able to be able to to be successful in business it's not that there's a time frame for that when you have God on your side you cannot put time onto it your dreams do not have expiration date amen because with our God all things are possible he can take a drug addict that was just a few months was addicted to drugs and in seven months can make him into a home group leader and a person who influenced others who brings people for Jesus Christ and these dreams they do not have a timeline because we serve a God of impossible amen church we serve a God that is bigger than our problems bigger than our limitation and he can do extraordinary things with simple people like me and you amen church and that's that's something we have to understand I just want to take a scripture this morning out of Genesis uh, chapter 11 we're just going to read uh, verses 1 through 7 and if you have your Bible we're just going to have a scripture on the screen it says now the whole earth had one language and one speech and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar Shinar and they dwelt there then they said to one another come let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly and they had bricks for stone and they had asphalt for mortar and they said come let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in heavens let us make a name for ourselves lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth and I want you to pay attention to verse 5 it says but the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men has built and the Lord says indeed the people are one and they have one language and this is what they begin to do now nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them the scripture it, it surprises me and when you read the scripture it just the people who do not know God, heathens, the people who were not Christian were able to get the attention of God because of what they thought, because of what they dreamed, or because of what they visioned. Can you imagine that? A people who do not know God, people who are not the children of God, complete sinners, heathens, they said, you know what? Let's build a city for ourselves. Let us dream so big. Let us just make a name for ourselves. Let's build a tower that reaches in heaven. And when God heard that, he said, wow. Let us get off our throne. Let us come down and to see what the sons of man had proposed in their heart. What they begin to dream and what they begin to envision in their hearts. You have to understand the power of a dream. The power of Venus vision is that if you dream small, you never need God for it. If your dreams are so small that you can accomplish it by yourself, why do you need God? If your dreams are, are to be small, then you don't need the Holy Spirit to be able to give you the grace and the power to be able to do better than your best, to be able to fulfill the destiny that God has for your life. Dreams are meant to be so big that you say, God, I cannot do it by myself and I need your help to be able to bring it to pass. And this is what the scripture talks about. Heathens who do not know God were able to attract the attention of God. That God said, wow, what they propose in the heart, nothing will be withheld from them because they said, look, we're going to do this and we're going to work at it. How much more the children of God, how much more who were bought by the price uh, through the Calvary, how much who the people who have the Holy Spirit inside their hearts can dream big and have God on his side to make the dreams come to pass. My question to you this morning is how much do you dream? 
How much do you envision into your heart? What is, what is that thing that God has placed in your heart? How big is it? Is it as big that you said, I can accomplish it by myself? Or is it as big as God, I cannot do it myself and I need you to be on my side to make my dreams come to pass. I just want to just give just a few points this morning uh, that, that, we can, that we can take and learn from of how to, to be able to have the dreams that God has placed inside of our hearts to have them come to pass. Not just to be daydreams, not just to be something that we, that we vision, but it's something that comes to pass. Amen. If we aim at impossible, we'll be able to reach our maximum. If we reach for maximum, we'll be able to reach our minimum. If we reach and aim for minimum, we will never get nothing. We will accomplish nothing. Now, but the first point I want to bring is how big do you want to dream? How big do you want to dream? How big is that desire that God has placed inside your heart? If you are if, if you are single this morning, if you are you know going from relationship to relationship, if you see you know if there's a family curse of people getting divorced and you're saying you know maybe that's that's my destiny, that's where I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be maybe into a marriage who, who was divorced. That's not a dream that that's not a big enough dream. You need a dream that you need God with where you're gonna say that I'll have a, a marriage that'll be successful, not just only successful, that I'll be mentoring other marriages and help them to get out of divorce. That's a bigger dream dream your dream shouldn't be you know I'm addicted to, to you know to smoke I'm addicted to drinking and I pray that God will set me free your dream got to be that I'll be set free from drugs and I'll open a rehab center to be able to get other drug addicts to get delivered from their from their addiction my dream is not that you know I can uh, hope I can I can you know save my own life you know my nobody's in my family is Christian and you know I, I want to serve God for all my life no your, your dreams gotta be that I'll open up a home group you know I'll be the one rescuing my family I'll be the one that will rewrite the history of my family and I'll be the one to release home groups and one day I'll open up a church that is a dream that needs God don't dream a dream that you can say I can accomplish it by myself. Dream a dream that you can say I need God to make it to come to pass. Amen church. When you have faith you are creating. When, when you have faith to be able to dream big your mind and your spirit they come together and they begin to create. They begin to create. How big do you want to dream this morning? What is that dream that God has placed inside of your heart? Why we always talk every service every morning prayer we talked about thousands locally and millions globally because we know we cannot accomplish it by ourselves we know as, as maybe as small as we are we know one thing we need God for this dream to come to pass the vision is much more than we can handle that is holy is why Holy Spirit was given to us so we can bring that dream to pass that in the last days God will pour out the spirit upon all flesh that our young generation will see visions will see dreams they'll be able to conquer their schools they'll be able to open up churches there'll be a generation to lead the church and that is a dream that is much bigger than us how big do you want to dream this morning if it's you right now you're working at a job that is just you're living from paycheck to paycheck God wants you to dream one day of owning a business God wants you to dream one day to be able to sponsor people through college to be able to give away cars be able to give people money for rent to be able to live on more than enough that you represent your heavenly father who says that gold and silver is mine not just that you can drive a Bentley but you can be a blessing to other people that when you give to people they say I want to serve the God that you serve not that you are so broke they say come serve my Jesus well you are broke why would I serve you Jesus but a Jesus that has so much money that you are giving out to the poor you, you open orphanages you open up hospitals in third world countries that you live a life where your dream scares people where sometimes you are ashamed to tell your dream because you say other people call me crazy that is a dream that God has given our pastor. When we were starting our church, you know, when our pastor would share the dream, at times, you know, when we were sitting and we were kind of like, don't say it so loud. People will leave our church. And that's exactly what happened. People begin to leave our church because they say, you're, you, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't speak the language. Your youth is, is still robbing stores. And who are you? Who do you think that, that you're doing? But our pastor had a dream that said, God, I cannot do it. You gave me a dream inside of your heart, inside of my heart and that is a dream that can only you can help us come to pass and today we are celebrating because one man's focus, one man's dream wasn't broken. One man dared to dream big enough and that is why we are here this morning church. 
I remember when I was, um, I remember when, when um, like around four years ago, when Zachy was starting off and he just turned 10, I was like, man, I'm going to go buy you a drum set. You're going to be the best drummer, you know, all these things. And Zachy was like, whoa, that's cool, you know. <laughs> He's still small, I remember. It was like, you're going to be the best. And, you know, in our family, in our whole family tree, we don't have a one professional, professional musician. We don't have not one. We never had one musician. Uh, Ilya, no, no offense to Ilya. <laughs> Like my professional, professional, you know. <laughs> you know, not one. You know, we had, we don't have one person in our family tree who actually makes money off music. We don't have one person. I remember when Zaki was small, you know, I went and bought him a drum set. You know, every day I would play, you know, train with him. I'm telling him, you're going to be the best. You're going to get signed by a company. You're going to release, you know, uh, videos on YouTube. You know, you're just going to be great. He's like, yeah, whatever, you know. One day we were like, <laughs> we give him this mohawk haircut. <laughs> Like this mohawk, we hairspray, you know, the hell out of that hair. It's so hard. And then mom comes in, she's like, psst, cuts it all off with the gel inside the hair. So I ripped out most of the hair. <laughs> but I keep telling him, dream bigger, dream bigger. To a point, you know, I'll come into his room. I would see a poster. You know, everything that I tell him would be on the poster. And every time he would see it, he would see it. And today, you know, he's offering lessons to people at 15 years old. He's giving lessons and he's, he's getting paid to teach other people to play drums. And this is just the beginning of a big dream. You know, this is, this is why we have to talk about big dreams to our younger generation because they catch on to the fire. They, they, they're like, you tell them you're going to be great. They're like, of course I'm going to be great. I have no other option. You know, they, they don't believe in, you know, oh, I'm going to fail. You know, it's only us that we experience failures and we're like, well, you know, if you, if you go too far, you know, you might fall down. You, you know, things will hurt. You know, just chill. You know, just chill. Relax. Don't go too far. But for a younger generation, the moment you tell them something big, they're like, I'm going to do it. I was, that's why I want most of them dreams to be astronauts. They believe to be doctors and all these great people until they hit like high school and then depression kicks in. And that's where back to working at McDonald's. No offense to McDonald's, but because we, we cripple their ability to dream. We cripple their ability to envision bigger than themselves. We cripple their ability to understand that with God all things are possible. Yes, you can say, look at me, the weaknesses that I am. But I can tell you one thing. I can see you but also the God that lives inside of you. You can say that I'm full of weaknesses and mistakes. But don't forget the God that said I will choose to live inside this temple. And that anything that they propose in their heart, I'll be behind them to back up the word. You have a God of the universe who lives inside of you. Don't dream small. Don't dream a dream that you can only accomplish by yourself. Dream a big dream that only can be possible with God. Amen, church? Your dream will set your agenda. The dream that you place inside your heart will begin to give you things to do on your daily basis. Whenever you begin to dream so big, it begins to give you steps on how to accomplish that dream. It begins to give you things that you do to, uh, every day. The people that you talk to, the podcasts to listen to, the books to read. You know how much time to spend in prayer. Your dream will begin to give you agenda. Will begin to give you to do what you need to do to be able to accomplish that dream that God inside, has inside of your heart. Amen, church? Point number two is how hard do you want to work? How hard do you want to work? Prophet T.B. Joshua says one quote that I really love and it says, work as if everything depends on you and pray as if everything depends on God. Why we talk about evangelism every service, why we pray for souls every service because we understand one point, work as if everything depends on you and pray as if everything depends on God every service we pray for the same thing God we want to see thousands sold local uh, saved locally in millions globally we pray for it because we know that with our power we do everything that we can with our uh, with our power with our might with us witnessing with our Instagram with our Facebook with our video team with our live stream with our how not to invite we do everything that we can on our part but we also don't forget the other side we pray as if everything depends on God for your dreams to come to pass you have to understand you have to hustle you have to work that you know dreams will be able to accomplish themselves you have to work 
You have to work as if, as if everything that you can do to witness, to be able to do your business deals, to be able to be the best at your workplaces. If you're sick in your body and your dream is to, to, to have a healthy body, you know that you are, you know, fit. The, you, your dream that you, you go to gym, you eat right. That, that is something that you can do by yourself. But also the other part where you rely on God, where you trust in God. If you are not talking about your dream, if you're not talking about your vision, your vision is talking about you and it's calling you lazy. If you are not talking about your dream of your vision every day, your vision is talking about you and it's calling you lazy. And that is the important for us to be able to talk. Yet to some people you might sound ridiculous. But the moment you talk about your dream, your dreams gives you a to-do list. Gives you agenda on how to accomplish your dream. How to take that step. You know, we talked about having a sanctuary packed. We talked about it. We prayed about it. Today you're sitting in a sanctuary that is packed. We're talking about that one day your tithe, your income will become your tithe. And one day you'll see people will testify. What I make today... What, 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 what my tithe is today is what I make. We're talking about that one day our track will become our regular attendance and service. We're talking about it because we know that is the dream that God has set of our heart and it will come to pass in Jesus name. Amen. You need to be talking about your dream. You need to be talking about it. One day I'll open a home group. One day I'll release people. One day I'll lay hands on the sick and they will be healed from cancer. They will be delivered from the from addiction. They'll be delivered from the hands of the enemy. You got to be talking about your dream in, so you don't have your dream talking about you. Amen church? It is amazing that we, that we read the scripture that Genesis 11 verse 9 that it says that the heathens that just when I when I heard this I was just like I was amazed how people who do not know God are able to attract God's attention to be able to come down how God left his throne able to see what are these people imagining in their hearts it's just it just it surprises me how much more the children of God who have the Holy Spirit inside of them how much more we can move God with how much we see in our vision and how much we dream how much more that God that, that sent his son for us that bled for us how much our mind can expand so much that God said I like what you're thinking I like what you dream because I know you can't do it but you have to depend on me to make it come to pass I want us to be the people that, that get God's attention every morning that we wake up and say God my dream is so big not for me to save but me and my whole house to be saved yes my family might be Catholic but I, I see my whole family being saved yes you know when my family don't only thing I know is cancer everybody's dying out of sickness but my dream is that everybody in my family will be healed will be healthy and they'll serve the Lord with me my dream is not that you know my brothers and my sisters are on drugs my dream is that I'll be saved from all that. I'll be delivered from that and I'll be saving other people who are still addicted and that is my dream and I need God for me to accomplish that dream I need God for me to be able to see the vision come to pass how much do you dream how big is that your dream this morning? I just want to challenge. I want to be able to, to be able to, to challenge you that don't dream small with God. Don't dream small with God. We have testimonies upon testimonies in this place that when they dream big with God, God was able to come through for them. I remember as a, as a kid when I was in uh, Ukraine, when I was at the church service, when I was walking and, uh, and I was... I found a dollar. I shared the story before, and I found a dollar. And then that time in Ukraine was a lot of money. You can be like literally buy a bike with that. And I remember that in that service, you know, there's something in my heart was like, give that money to offering. As the offering basket comes on, just give that dollar. I was a kid. It was like six. You know, I know what a dollar is back in the day because it was like gold. You know, and. I gave that money and I remember in, in, during that time when I placed that money in the offering basket, since then I had that dream, I'm going to be live a life that I will be known for giving a, like extraordinary things, to be able to give things that are, everybody's like, well, how can you give so much? You know, even in last year, you know, me and my wife were able to get a privilege to give away a car. That's something that I dreamed for since I was a young kid. And these are the things that with man it's not possible. With man you cannot accomplish these things but with God all things are possible. Amen church? With God all things are possible. Maybe you're in a marriage that is struggling. Believe a greater dream that not only your marriage will be saved but you'll be also counseling other marriages from, from breaking up and divorce. From ending up in being separation. From ending up with kids being affected by the divorce. Dream a bigger dream church. Amen? 
Number three is how much do you want, do you want to envision? Uh, another quote by Prophet Steve Josh that I really love is that a man is what he thinks all day long. A man's life is what his thoughts make it. A man's life is what his thoughts make it. You know, I remember I heard one time, I said, be careful of what you think because they can become words. Be careful what your words are because they become behaviors. Behavior, be careful of your behavior because they become actions. Be careful of your actions because they become your destiny. And it all starts out with our thoughts. What, what are you envisioning in your mind? What are you dreaming in your mind this morning? What is something that you are, are going through? What is something that you maybe to you it seems like an impossible situation and that is a perfect recipe for God to step in. If you're this morning you're saying you know what I'm facing in my life is an impossible situation that you are a perfect candidate for God to step along your side to make your dreams come to pass amen church to make the thing that you what you have in your life to be able to come to pass and I remember what Vladimir said uh, Pastor Vlad said one of the uh in the user says vision without action is a daydream and action without a vision is a nightmare I know myself but I also know the God that lives inside of me church. We know ourselves, we know our limitations, we know our weaknesses but also the God that lives inside of him, inside of you, inside of me is able to do exceedingly and above and beyond what we can ever think or we can ever imagine. That is the God that you serve. He's not a God of a small things but it's a God who can in the middle of a desert, in the middle of a thing to be able to feed millions. He's a God who, who can out of few bread and few loaves of fish to be able to feed thousands he's the God who's able to split the Red Sea he's a God who can take a drug addict and make him into a person that's a there's evangelist to the whole school to the whole family he's a he's a God who can take an incurable disease and make a person with a perfect body and a healthy body who can be a testimony that God is the same yesterday today and forever church that is the God that you serve this morning we I want us to be able to have dreams I want us to envision much more than what we can that we can do with God and the last thing is how much past do you want to forget how much past do you want to forget I remember uh, the same time exactly last year uh, we we had lunch we had things like dinner after New Year's Eve um, me Edder I think Tatiana so we were sitting in this restaurant and we were talking about you know goals and accomplishments for that year and I remember Edder one thing he said that I was like you know dream big you know we're gonna you know you God can use you you know you just just aim higher you know what God can do I remember one thing that he told me that that struck me he said but bro I, you know I'm illegal I don't have papers this I'm like who told you you can't succeed so who told you that you know he's like well you know these people in the past that I know you know they, they don't rise above you know but I'm like who told you this? this this we cannot stop you from this you got to dream bigger today he has a business in photography today he when he takes a picture you can become a model you know once after he's done with uh, photoshop but you know so single man I, I talked to him after service so it's today God is using him today you know he's given away things you know as of last year the same time that last year you know he was living from paycheck to paycheck this year same time God has blessed him with the business he's making money out of something he loves doing he takes a picture you look awesome you know and that is our God that can be able to 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 be able to forget our past you know be able to forget the failures of our past and be able to dream a bigger dream amen church Many times our past is, is the biggest hindrance to our dreams. When we tried so hard to be able to accomplish what God has wants us to accomplish and we fail and we see that as, as a road roadblock as, as a as you know when you uh, when you're trying to write from a cops they put these strips that if you drive it's just like it makes your tire flat that is sometimes our past that's what it does to us. We try to go forward but it's something that it makes our tires flat and we try to go forward but we can't let go of what happened in our past. Quit cheating on your future with your past. Your past is too heavy to bring into the future. It's just it's too heavy to be able to say God well this is what happened. I believe that you can do it but just remember that I failed just a year ago. Remember what I've done a year ago. Remember what I've done yesterday and you begin to tell God God this is what happened yesterday. God says forget the past. 
forget the past because I'm not a God that lives in the past but I am the God that lives in the future state. God sees you not how you are now, not how you were in the past but God sees the future you. God sees a blessed you. God sees the delivered you. God sees a you that is above and not beneath. That every time you walk in you are blessed. Every time you walk out you are blessed. Anything your hand touches will be blessed. That is the God that sees you that way. Let go of the past. How much past do you want to forget? How much do you want to forget of the failures that, that you tried, you tried and you failed? You cannot drag your past into your, to your present, to your future. It's too heavy. There was a man, uh, Robert Williams, and all of you guys know him. He put up his picture. He made the whole world laugh, but yet he couldn't make himself laugh because he couldn't let go of his past. His past was way too heavy to bring into his future, into his present. A man who made every, I mean you guys seen some of his comedies, you, you even made, you even laughed at some of the things that he has a wonderful act, made the whole world laugh, yet couldn't make himself laugh. Couldn't let go of his past and his past was able to take his life. Your past, if you dwell on your past, you cripple your ability to think, to act and exercise faith in the present. If you, your mind is dwelling on what happened yesterday, you cripple your ability to think and to act, to, to act and to exercise faith in the present. How much past do you want to forget church? You know our church existed for some time now and you know there's so many things that we tried with our church you know we stood on the on the freeways with banners you know we spread over 50,000 flyers and and all these things you know just one person shows up and they probably just showed up by mistake and so many things that we've done that just failed it failed it failed you know all these things but we know that we serve a God that is bigger than our past. We know that, you know, what happened yesterday, we let it go and we serve a God that says in the last days, He says in the future state, and that we dream of a future state because that's where our God is. He doesn't dwell in my past, but He dwells in the future and He says, this is where you are headed. And look, and raise up your eyes and be able to look where you're headed. Not what happened, but where you are going. If a hidden if those who do not know God can attract God's attention but their ability to dream, to envision how much more a Christian, how much more you that is filled with the Holy Spirit can move the presence of God in your life. When you are able to dream big, when you're able to work hard, when you're able to envision much and you're able to forget the failures of your past, you're able to move God's presence in your life and God will begin to step in your life and he'll be able to stand next to you and says that anything that you do will be able to come to pass and we know one thing if God is for you who can be against you and that is nobody when God is with the nation who can stand against her when God is with the believer what weapon can form against me will prosper because no weapon that is formed against a believer will prosper in Jesus name and that is you tonight church I want us to rise up on our feet. I want us to be able to spend time. Right now we're going to go into worship. We're going to pray after, after we're going to spend this time in worship. And I want us to serve a God of big dreams. Amen. We are going to serve God whom nothing is impossible. And that is, that is the God that you serve this morning church. Amen.